really about half the population is firmly entrenched in a, a 3D matrix, right? Where it's kind of just mm -hmm. mind body obsession with thoughts, uh, materialism, the, the tangibility of things, which is uh, materialism is right next to the nihilism, by the way. And we can get into that if you want. So, but, uh, but uh, half the population is actually designed from my perspective, Ryan, mm -hmm. about half the population is designed to continue to work with themselves in what we would call a three-dimensional matrix type consciousness. The other half of the planet is waking up rapidly, absolutely rapidly. And, and from my perspective, that's also what it's sort of meant to be. And through this split, if you will, mm -hmm. humanity is going to get the opportunity to decide, and it always does, to decide which direction does it want to go and does it want to stay in a low frequency 3D type matrix and just kind of move the furniture around in the same room? Or does humanity, does the collective consciousness want to move into what, you know, what is the fourth frequency? People keep saying we're going into 5D. Okay, let's be accurate, my friends. Let's anchor... The reason why we have trouble anchoring some of these things in is because we're not accurate. We're not using the right terminology. Energy exists frequentially. We're in the third frequency. We would be moving to the fourth frequency. And that is where about half the population is trying to pull us into that. You can also look at this, Brian, as two very distinct timelines, if we want to look at it from that perspective. Two very distinct, even though there's more than two timelines battling it out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But humanity can move into the fourth frequency. And I, I, I got news for you. That's exactly what's going to happen. I would have never reincarnated if we were going to move backwards. Okay. So there's the real answer. We're going to move into the fourth frequency, but there's going to be this balance because there has to be a balance. There's never going to be the whole planet. This, this is just not true and not accurate because it doesn't work that way. There has to be a balance. So some souls didn't sign up to move into this fourth frequency and some absolutely did and we're kind of seeing the battle over a timeline really is what we're witnessing more and more people are open to consciousness what i call sentience right and working with themselves and then with each other and then with the environment in a very holistic in a very holistic way and then other people they're getting more and more entrenched into the ego mind now i want to just add one thing and then i'll and then i'll shut up so oh. This this obsession, this obsession with the ego mind identity, right? It's an addiction, and I want I want everyone to start to understand this. This this collapsing of consciousness, a constriction of energy, which forms our humanistic personality, this this human version of this immeasurable I am. This contraction of consciousness, the collapsing and constriction of energy becomes an addiction. And people don't even realize that they're addicted to analysis and judgment, to the contraction of their mind and the constriction of their energy, which is why they can't stop thinking. And it, most people have realized their thoughts are negative and they can't stop judging others. They can't stop judging other people. And I want everyone to know that this is an addiction. It's an absolute addiction. And the only way that we overcome this addiction is abstinence from giving into the craving. And the real answer to the abstinence of giving into the craving is to be present, or in other words, meditation. It's interesting because I talk about it on my channel, but there is a phenomenon with the ego mind. And, um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Ra and the Law of One, and they call it the sinkhole of indifference. It, it's the, there's, a, there's a group of people, and it, it, you're right, it's about 50% that are just indifferent and the indifference is an expression of the ego it, it, it's hard to explain because that, that that wouldn't seem to make sense but the indifference it's just they're only worried about what they're doing and and and, and the ego kind of traps them in this indifference they don't really care they don't want to move on they don't want to um, expand their consciousness they don't even if they're provided evidence the ego just quickly tells them oh that's just woo woo and it's ridiculous and pushes them away I'd like to get your perspective of the indifference of, the, of of that lower frequency. Well, that yeah, that's well said, by the way, and I, I I wholeheartedly agree. So, the the true self, the I am, right, the true self with the capital S, okay, is not indifferent about anything, okay, and, th and this is also part of, uh, from my perspective, the total misunderstanding or conceptualization of what self realization or authentic enlightenment actually is. 
most of us have this understanding that if someone is actually enlightened or a, a master, whatever word you want to use, that they become incredibly serious and dour, uh, can't crack a joke, or uh, they, they become allergic to having a good time. Okay, the opposite is actually true. Okay, so this so this indifference that you're talking about has to do with keeping one small. It has to do with keeping one small. The expansion of getting involved in greater understandings, their own greater consciousness, the greater good, cannot happen within this constriction and collapsing of consciousness, and therefore the constriction of energy. The sinkhole is a, is a great way to great way to do it. Now, if we understand that the ego mind identity is bankrupt. Now, when I say bankrupt, I mean it authentically and intrinsically. It doesn't know anything. All it does is memorize. That's all it does. Now, without holding on to the identifications, roles, concepts, beliefs, bodily sensations, experiences, without holding on to these things, the ego mind identity dies. It dies because it's bankrupt. The reason why the mind wants more and more and more information is because it doesn't know anything. So it white knuckles, Brian. It hangs on mm -hmm. for dear life. Now, how that shows itself is this indifference, this not caring, this, this lack of expansion, this lack of evolution, this keeping playing very small, staying within the fragmented, compartmentalized, conditioned, brainwashed mind is really what that is. So we just lose passion. We lose joy. We lose the will and determination to create the life that we truly desire, not just individually, but collectively. All of that is gone. And part of it is a, tra it's a, it's a trauma-based response, Brian. Mm -hmm. It's a trauma-based response to kind of turtle up. And then we form this addiction of the constant analysis and judgment of everyone and everything else. And anyone that starts to break free out of that, the people that are addicted to the contraction of their own consciousness, that's why they lash out and judge. It's a trauma-based response. And unless we start to work with ourselves properly, we're not going to be able to move past the trauma. And this is the same trauma that everyone is subject to when they come here. And for me, the key is to get some detachment or non-identification with what we are aware of. And that gives us some space. And as we get some space, we got some room to work and then we can work with our energy properly. And we're going to be able to move past all these things. But I, I completely agree. Half the half the population has signed up not to ascend. As hard as that might be to hear for some people, it's the absolute truth. The other half signed up to be able to to be able to and participate in moving into the fourth the fourth frequency. But if someone wants to break free, if they want to break free, they're going to have to examine the compulsion of thinking, of judgment, of analysis, and the most persistent form of suffering is identification. And if we can give up identification, then the, the analysis, the nonstop analysis is, is going to stop because the analysis is really us really revealing all of our identifications, our identifications to certain concepts, beliefs, roles, ideologies, experiences, and so-called knowledge. When you start to give up those identifications and you start to reside in the present moment, it becomes impossible to really judge. And then we're going to start to create we won't be a consumer. We'll start to create from the unlimited state of what we really are, which is the I am. But until someone really wants to do this, the conditioning and the brainwashing and the low frequencies and how intoxicating this realm is, it, it'll become all too much. Let's let's step back a little bit and look at the third frequency. It It feels like it was constructed this way. And I'd love to have this conversation. I've talked to people... Some will say that it's like a play. There's other people <laughs> that have played me. I'm just an actor in a role, and and and, and, and I, I might play it differently. Some people will say it's like a game. It's like a you know a, a simulation, but it's a game. You're 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 trying to escape the sinkhole. Essentially, you're trying to escape the ego mind. Uh, is this something that just accidentally happened in this frequency, or do you think this is constructed this way, and we're in this environment? And how do you view the structure of it? Is, is it a game? Is, is it a play? And how do you view it? <laughs> <laughs> what a great question. Okay. How do I view it? Okay. Or the big picture, my friend, how, how, how I say it, is that, excuse me, the multiverse is a multifrequential, multidimensional hall of mirrors designed for self-mastery. 
Okay, that's my uh, tangible take take on it. Now, when I say self mastery, we can look at this as as a game, right? You know, when we play a video game, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I play I play the old school games, right? So I'm not very advanced <laughs> when it comes to that. I play Zuma. I right, I play Zuma and uh, pole pole position. Okay, anyway, right, right, so, pole position. <laughs> yeah, love it, right? So uh, when when we're playing a video game, the the goal is to keep advancing to the next level, the next, you know, clear the screen, you go to the next one. Your avatar gets uh, more powerful, wiser, can do more things. I mean, this is this is so accurate. This is absolutely so accurate. The the only real difference between that scenario and what what we are we we are experiencing and everyone else here is that we can jump. So in other words, when we play a video game, it's it's linear. And that as we clear boards, the, the avatar gets more and more advanced. And then we kind of, the game gets saved and we pick up where we left off, right? Okay. So when we have an incarnation, right? And we incarnate here into the into the third frequency, into this, into this realm. And the key is to shed the ego mind identity. And then you have the ultimate avatar, which can really do anything because it's a dream state. And when you wake up in a dream, you can do anything. So we can reincarnate into any level of the video game. So when we're playing mm -hmm. Zuma or whatever, whatever game we're playing, we have to keep clearing boards. And then the next time we turn the game on, we get to pick up where we left off. Okay. It, we are not that limited. We are nowhere near that limited. So when an incarnation is over, we played a game, we played our character and the, the game is over. Now, when we decide to reincarnate and play again, we can go into any level of this game. Within within the physical universe, by the way, which is the first full dimension, which is 12 frequencies. Okay. So we can reincarnate anywhere in there because incarnation is always into the physical universe. And the physical universe is the first full dimension that's divided up into 12 frequencies with the bottom three banding together to give one reality and the experience of height, weight, and width, which we call a three-dimensional reality. And that's because the energies are so slow and dense, they need to sandwich together to support one another. Now, as you move up into the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, that's not the case anymore. So we can come back whenever we want into any one of these levels that we desire. So we're, we're far less limited than we are when we play a video game. But I really feel like where we got video games is exactly what I'm talking about through the process mm -hmm. of, of reincarnation, being able to play whatever character we choose our body for those that don't think so. Inaccurate. We choose our body. We choose the timeline. We choose the frequency and we choose which team we're going to play for. That's right. That's what I said. We choose a lot more than that. Those are the four main ones that most human beings want to know about. So when I say when we choose the team, you can think of the team of of uh, white light for liberation and freedom and the advancement of consciousness, or you can choose the the quote unquote bad guys that are trying to hold everyone down, subjugate, torment, and feed upon. So we get to we get to choose which team that we want to play for, mm -hmm. but it's a simulation. I think I have I think I just have a problem with that word. Yeah. Um. No one really dies. I talk to dead people all the time, so there's no such thing as death, right? It's like being in one car, getting out of that car, and getting into another one. Just all of a sudden, you're in a different environment, different surroundings. That's kind of what that different frequency, different reality. And your understanding of yourself and the greater reality will change. But it is kind of a simulation, except it counts. It counts. It counts. Now, I don't want to keep rambling. What do I mean when I say it counts? Okay. <laughs> so the multiverse is a multifrequential, multidimensional hall of mirrors designed for self-mastery. Now, the counting part, is the deepening of who and what we are and who and what we are is love and wisdom whose subsets are talents and abilities. That's the I am and the I am discourses. The I am is our love and wisdom whose subsets are talents and abilities that is given energy in order to create. Now the score, the deepening is our evolution. Evolution is the deepening of our eternal reservoir of love and wisdom who subsets our talents and abilities. And we take that with us. And every time we go into a different realm, a different reincarnation or whatever it is, we take what it is that we have accrued, which is the sentience, which is the I am, the deepening of who and what we are. And then when we go to this incarnation or that incarnation, we have that. That is actually who we are. 
Now to add one more thing to that, mm -hmm. because this game is incredible. It's the greatest game ever invented, which is, which is why I'm here. So right. we're evolving. The I am, the individualized unit, Brian, RJ, we're evolving, right? So the incarnation ends and we, we kind of slip right back out of the suit, just like we were slipped into it. We slip right back out. Now we are a, a projection or a tentacle of our higher self. So we are our higher self, just less in volume, two and a half percent. So when the incarnation is over, the octopus pulls that tentacle up. You and me pulls that tentacle up just a little bit. Now, after uh, life review, rest and recuperation, research and development for the next incarnation, when it's time for that tentacle to be projected down again, the quality and the amount of sentience can, can radically change, can radically mm -hmm. change. So the last thing I'll say about think of a screwdriver and you can change the head on the top of the you know the screwdriver, mm -hmm. but about 80 to 90% of the screwdriver stays exactly the same, but you can change the head. Mm -hmm. So depending upon how the higher self wants to evolve itself, it can change the quality of the sentience that it imbues one of its tentacles with. It can actually lessen the amount of sentience it's going to project. It could increase the amount of sentience it wants to project, and, and it can change the quality of the sentience itself. But the name of the game is the evolution. And the evolution is by keeping the score, the deepening of our eternal reservoir of love and wisdom, whose subsets are talents and abilities. It's very much like a game that has no beginning and has no end.